Yes, hello, good morning. Um, we are very happy to welcome you to our webinar on uh, family bikes and how to transport your children uh, in a sustainable way. Um, my name is Susanna Reiten. I coordinate the City Change Chicago Bike Project and I will give this webinar today with my colleague Karl Reiter, um, yeah, who, who is also working with me uh, on this project. So let's start. Our webinar uh, has the topic family bikes, the modern way to transport your children. And this picture in the beginning show you a vision from parents for their newborn baby. Uh, it's a vision uh, to grow up in a motorized world. This picture is from the 60s, but partly true, maybe also these days. So uh, the the idea of motorization is 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 very very well uh, established in in a lot of families, but when it comes to awareness raising related to transport and mobility, then it starts already earlier. It starts already before the baby is born because the parents have a lot of time and attention uh, to this period when the baby is born. Uh, for, for instance, in pre-birth courses, uh, there are a lot of discussion how, how the life will change when a new baby is in the family, is how the life will change related to children rooms, related to, to food, related to behavior in the family, and also related to transport, related to moving around. And usually, usually this is the time uh, where parents think about, do we need a car? Do we need a bigger car? Do we need a second car? Very often the discussions are around uh, these topics. And, they, and there is a, a need to to have also the mobility options beside of the car uh, present. How, how could we do this with, with other modes of transport than a car? And a cargo bike is a good, a very good possibility to replace a car or at least to replace a second car because uh, the baby can be, can be transported from day one with a cargo bike or with a bicycle trailer. You, you can use special seats. By the way, they, these are the same seats like, like you have to use in a car. And you can move around in an active way with your baby from the, from the start on. And, the, and this is a, a quite interesting thing. And this can be already decided uh, during the period of pregnancy. Yes, uh, and of course you cannot only transport your baby uh, in a cargo bike, it becomes much more fun even when the children are a little bit older. Toddlers and older children uh, can experience their surroundings uh, much more intensively uh, and they can have fun, so it's an exciting ride. Moreover, they can talk to their mom or their dad while they are um, having a ride to the kindergarten. And it's quite certain that they're going to be the coolest kid on the block when they arrive uh, at the nursery or at their destination. And of course, depending on the type of bicycle or cargo bike you uh, get, uh, to as, as a so to speak um, intelligent form of SUV um, you can bring your whole family all the siblings can come for a ride or you can invite friends so um, it is an easy way to drop off uh, children at the nursery and then maybe the older ones uh, at the school uh, or at a friend's house there's really no need at all um, for a car and then the parent can continue onwards to their, uh, to their work. And this uh, is a really lovely picture and it shows that the cargo bike is truly 
a, a mode of transport for the entire family. So why not try it out and uh, even bring the granny and the baby f for a ride? To protect your children, uh, there are rain canopies that can be folded quite easily um, and removed um, if the sun is shining again. There are sun canopies. There's just one thing you need to remember to really wrap up your children warm uh, in winter and maybe even bring an additional blanket uh, or a sleeping bag for your baby because uh, otherwise they might get too cold. But it's not only about the transport of children, it's also about wording. It is about what children learn when they learn their first words. And that was a, an issue which we took up in another project. It was the Bambini project. We found out when we analyzed uh, the books which are available uh, for children when they learn their first words are very often car-minded or machine-minded. And what we did, we introduced a book which is uh, dealing with, uh, with, the, with the vocabulary of the soft mobility. And so the children grew up with another way of getting their words or getting their first words. And it was the same uh, with the picture books. So the picture books are dealing quite often with, with, with car traffic or traffic as a, let's say, as a dangerous uh, thing or dangerous activity. And we found only little books where the cycling, for instance, uh, is is described as something which is, which is funny and may, is a joy and 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 something you love you you can love and and not uh, a thing which you have to be afraid of and you have to look right left and all these things which are usually in a in a story. So we we we, we try to make these books. Yeah, uh, but of course, books are very important and stories are important. We all know that. But uh, once the children grow up uh, a little bit, they need more kind of tactile stimulation and they learn uh, from push toys and pull toys and games. Um, and when Carl and I worked on this Bambini project, uh, I think it was already 2010, um, then we did a little survey uh, of children's toys and particularly the toys for boys are all cars, planes, trucks, uh, tractors. So in this project, we had a Polish toy producer, Bio. You can see it on the top um, of the presentation. Um, he was a partner and they designed beautiful uh, wooden toys for children. They all have to do with cycling or with uh, active mobility and they're still around. Yeah, and uh, of course now, since we are working for a long time already with cargo bikes, uh, there are also cargo bike wooden toys. Uh, some of them are made uh, by the company uh, Bio, as I mentioned, and others can be purchased through a, a German company called uh, Cargoli. And uh, now uh, it seems that even the large toy producers like Lego and Duplo have caught on to the fact that uh, maybe there's a need for cyclists and even cargo bikes. Uh, so this is um, a real cargo bike and bicycle army here. And um, yeah, when children grow up and uh, get mobile by themselves, of course, uh, also their motor skills develop. And it makes sense that the toys uh, that you provide them with really grow with them. So uh, here, this is um, the little daughter of Michael Colville Anderson, and she's already training to be a real cargo bike rider when she's older. Yeah, and this uh, shows that when you provide them with the right tools, the children will soon be able to go out alone on their adventures.
And this is uh, also a picture I really love because it shows something that uh, children really learn by imitation. And uh, this brings, uh, stresses the fact that uh, really it's important uh, to be a role model as a parent and you really uh, need to watch what, uh, how you transport the children. Because the other fact, of course, is that uh, we as humans are um, very much uh, creatures of habit, so to speak. So uh, if a child always uh, gets transported or basically grows up on the backseat of a car, uh, they will be quite uh, it will be quite unlikely that they cycle uh, as an adult. On the other hand, if you take them with in your cargo bike and then make sure that they cycle from early on, uh, then uh, they are quite um, likely to be cycling themselves as a grown up. This shows again how you can be uh, a role model and uh, take even three children with you uh, on the ride. Yeah. And it's also about inspiring others, in our case, especially uh, kindergartens, which can be a good place to promote uh, cargo bikes, because on the one hand, the kindergartens themselves can use cargo bikes. What you see here is a, is a bigger version uh, of a cargo bikes, may use cargo bikes for excursions for a trip to the park and use it as a possible uh, as a possible tool as a a little bit as a bicycle bus uh, to go from the kindergarten uh, to other areas uh, around the kindergarten and and uh, to use it and to to make it available for the kids and for the garden as a tool for the kindergarten but the even more important part is that the kindergarten can be the host for a sort of sharing system or a tryout system. So it, if, it can, if uh, the cargo bikes are not very, let's say, common in a certain city, then this is a good possibility to start and, and to equip kindergarten with cargo bikes. And the, uh, the parents can uh, rent it out for a certain period and get some uh, experience with this uh, way of transport. And this is very important because everybody who has the possibility to, to get a feeling how it is and to get a smile of, of the children back uh, is usually quite enthusiastic about this uh, type of transport. And kindergartens are a good place also to make the topic of cycling more emotional. What you see here was a competition between kindergartens and they should contribute with different, let's say, uh, installations which show bikes. This is the the flower bike of the group who worked in the nature. And then we have uh, a next example. These are the uh, little engineers. They made a bike uh, which is in combination with water. So we got a lot of uh, contributions. And so uh, the, the way the cargo bike is one way to get kindergarten more in the general uh, topic of cycling. But there are a lot of other ways how you can make cycling as the normal uh, or as the very emotional uh, part of the kindergarten activities. And, and we would say this is a, a, a quite good entry door to promote this general topic of cycling and cargo cycling. Yes. So that brings us already to what cities can do. I don't know uh, who is listening. Uh, I can't see that, but uh, if there are any city administrators or decision makers listening here and you are asking yourself, well, how could I promote uh, family bikes in my city? Then uh, there are certainly different ways to do that. So on the one hand, of course, you can set incentives for the families themselves. 
and Carl has already uh, mentioned this uh, option of tryout possibilities. Uh, we have seen over the years that trying out cargo bikes or these opportunities, they really uh, promote the purchase of cargo bikes because often people can just simply not uh, imagine how such a cargo bike uh, drives, uh, how it will feel and how uh, yeah, good it is to transport your children. So uh, if you can um, have tryout opportunities or tryout days in your city uh, where you have a, a number of different cargo bike models to show to the families, that's a, an ideal way of promotion. And then, of course, there is the second uh, thing, sharing or rental schemes. Of course, uh, in a city, not everyone has the opportunity to, uh, a park, to have a parking space, uh, a safe or secure parking space near their home. Uh, they simply maybe don't want to invest uh, in the money because uh, a cargo bike uh, with electric assist, which we recommend for families, uh, is around probably around 5,000 uh, euros. So cargo bike uh, rental and sharing schemes are a great way to promote these vehicles in your, in your cities. And um, the third thing, of course, are subsidy schemes. Uh, we have seen uh, over the years also uh, that subsidy schemes are a great um, way to promote them, particularly in Germany. There are many such subsidy schemes uh, running and it has turned out that uh, at the moment, uh, Germany seems to be the leading uh, country for cargo bike sales. Um, so this, I'm sure, has to do with the fact that there are so many subsidy schemes uh, available there for the people. Yeah, and of course, Carl has already uh, said a lot about that. The second way is to set incentives for kindergartens and crashes and maybe even childminders. So uh, in a sense, uh, you, if you uh, as, a, as a city administrator uh, could hold workshops in kindergarten or get an NGO to hold workshop in kindergarten to raise awareness among the kindergarten teachers, uh, but uh, obviously to make them then into multipliers. That's uh, a great uh, opportunity. And the next thing, of course, you can do is to provide them with uh, toys uh, and playing tools and materials that we have just uh, some of them mentioned here uh, so that the children uh, can sort of establish an emotional bond from early on to cycling. Uh, and cargo bikes, of course. And the third thing Carl has already said, so uh, provide them with a cargo bike uh, for a few weeks uh, to try it out and uh, also let the parents try it out. So we are, uh, all, you saw already in the pictures different types of, of uh, cargo bikes which can be used for a family. So uh, the most uh, sold uh, cargo bike is what you see here with the, the wooden uh, box. Uh, it's the two-wheeler uh, version. This is uh, what what uh, people very often buy. But there is also a three-wheeler version where you have the children uh, in front of you. There are many three-wheeler versions. So most of them are, are produced in uh, Denmark, Copenhagen. So the, the famous Christiania or, the, or Nihola, as you see here, some brands. Who, who have these uh, three wheelers, which are better for transporting more children. Uh, and then you have also the possibility to transport the children behind of you. So it's the long tail versions, uh, which are also sold, but, all, but, but in the third place. But the most popular are the, the two wheeler with, with the wooden box, then the three wheelers and then uh, the long tail. Uh, versions, but 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 it, it's a great variety of of cargo bikes for children transport, which you can uh, choose from. Yeah, and this is uh, almost the end of this webinar. We just, if you liked what you heard, then uh, please uh, go and visit our website, the City Changer Cargo Bike website. Uh, there's a lot of interesting material available there, uh, particularly for today. Uh, this is the 
family guide for transporting children on a family bike. And as you can see, it's already available um, in, I think, nine uh, European languages uh, for you to download for free, um, to print it out, to uh, disseminate it. Yeah, and you can also obviously follow us on our social media, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and uh, we also have a YouTube channel. So thank you very much. Thank you for listening. Uh, what you find here is the, the web page, which is not City Change or Cargo Bike, but cyclelogistics.eu. So you find a, a lot of uh, useful information, pictures for downloads, videos, etc., etc., for, for your use, or you look at the social media channels. We, so now we are waiting for your questions. <laughs> we do have one here. Um, it is, uh, could you comment on the safety and practicalities of bike trailers compared to cargo bikes? Uh, it's more a psychological uh, issue. We had this discussion uh, very strong in, in, in Austria when it came to the decision which type of uh, family transport of bicycle related family transport should be funded. And there was in some cities a decision that the trailers for, for children will not receive fund, but cargo bikes will receive funding. And this was, uh, it was said because it's uh, not so safe to, to transport children uh, by, by bike trailer. But then we did an inquiry in, we had a lot, we have some regions where, where, they, where they are, there are a lot of bike trailers in, in the Western part of, of Austria. And we did a, 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 a a big survey in, on the police stations about uh, accidents. And there was no single accident uh, uh, in this area. So it's more a perceived unsafe, uh, unsafe uh, mode of transport. And it's more psychologically because you have, don't have eye contact with your children and so on. Yeah. I myself, I transported my children in a trailer van because at that time cargo bikes were not so uh normal <laughs> yeah and uh carl do you remember this example that there was a study i don't know where maybe you remember in the netherlands or some by some researcher who said that actually uh if a trailer is behind a, a bicycle then the cars uh overtake it much more slowly and uh this is even more so if it's a woman, but they are definitely careful. So it's, yeah. I guess it's a psychological problem more than anything. Yeah. I think if you feel unsafe on a bike, you can even use the trailer <laughs> as a distance uh, instrument for car overtaking, <laughs> even if you don't have any children. <laughs> Okay, we have another one. Um, you didn't mention the parking issue about cargo bike. Uh, you don't mention the parking issue about cargo bikes, cities, and so buildings, co-owners, architects have a huge responsibility in making these bikes being handy and easy to park. Do you have some input for this specific point? Uh, yeah, I think this uh, cargo bike parking is definitely an issue, particularly in cities where there are a lot of cargo bikes already. And um, I don't think it's that much of an issue in cities where it's just starting. Uh, but of course, uh, there is a responsibility to think ahead. Uh, I agree with that and to implement uh, from early on uh, cargo bike parking spaces, uh, if only uh, as an awareness raising uh, matter because uh, having installed uh, places with maybe a logo of a cargo bike uh, again raises awareness but uh, I think uh, until it gets a problem there have to be a lot of cargo bikes in a city. Okay may, may, maybe I can also add something to, to that we may we, we, we have a quite good overview in the home city of, of our company it's uh, the city of Graz in, in Austria and there we made an inquiry about uh, stationary traffic. 
and we found out that 92% of all the stationary traffic space is used for parked cars and 3% is for bus stops and, and railway stations and so on and another 3% for, uh, park, uh, for a stationary pedestrian traffic, so street cafes and, and benches and so on and 2% for cycle parking. And then we made a simulation and said, okay, let's say we would have tomorrow 5,000 uh, cargo bikes to park in, on street, uh, this, which would be a big increase in, in, in direction of Copenhagen. And, and then this, uh, this share would only change very little for the, for, it would change from, from 92% for used for cars to 90% to use for cars. So we find out, and, 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 the, car, and the bicycle would, would increase from 2% to 4%. So we see we have an overwhelming number of car spaces that, car, that the concentration of cargo bike uh, parking is maybe the wrong focus. So. If we, have, if we would have less car parking space, then maybe this would be an interesting uh, uh, thing to talk about. But, but in the moment, it's very easy to, 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 to shift a very small part of the car parking into, basic, into cargo bike parking. How do we convince a kindergarten to use cargo bikes bikes if it's located in a city with no or few bicycle infrastructure? Yeah, this is a, a tricky one probably, but um, it just needs uh, a lot of uh, not letting go and visiting a lot of kindergartens uh, and finding the right person. We have uh, ob obviously in the beginning as well uh, difficulties to convince uh, these uh, kindergartens, uh, but um, it helps definitely to provide them with a cargo bike uh, and uh, to to try it out there, to have a cargo bike uh, out for rent and to also um, pre um, provide them with some toys and tools uh, and maybe even some um, instructions on how to use the tools because that's they always like to try something new and then you can um, yeah, start uh, maybe with a workshop for the kindergarten teachers first and then give also one for the parents and um, hope that you will find a kindergarten that agrees. And, uh, you know, you have to start somewhere, every, always. Yeah, but this is a serious issue. Uh, probably it, it makes sense uh, to, to look at these kindergartens which are in the inner city area or an area where you have a speed limit of 30 kilometers uh, and so on or you have a good or, or let's say a good some uh, accessibility for bicycling. I, I wouldn't recommend to do it in a kindergarten which is in a very dangerous area with a lot of a high speed uh, streets around it but but this is more or less to start with the low hanging fruits and then to step by step to if you have more cargo bikes then they get easily uh let's say more people will find out that they, they this is a nice way of transport but you have to be courageous if you are in a in a in a very car minded city of course Thank you. Um, what about chairs attached to the bike? Um, are cargo, cargo bikes better? Children's seats. seats. Yeah. I think so. I think it is a matter of uh, what you prefer, whatever type of cargo. I mean, uh, these bikes that uh, we've shown in one of our last slides um, is uh, also a cargo bike in a sense. So um, it depends on what um, 
is more what, what you prefer as a person you know some people like cargo bikes a lot because they can uh, look at their children when they're sitting in front of them uh, i guess um, you're faster or it feels more like a real like a normal bike when you're on a bike uh, with one or two bike seats in the back mm -hmm. so um, i i think that these bikes these new uh, cargo bikes with one or two seats in the back uh, the one that we showed are definitely uh, safer than when you have a child seat uh, mounted on your bike uh, or maybe they are more stable or more uh, made for for this but yeah uh, it's yeah, it's also a matter of what you find in your national road code, because there can be some regulations which have to, which, which you have to follow, uh, depending on, on, on your road code. Uh, and this is, this differs from country to country. But particularly when the child is in front. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, it's it's not easy to say what is safe because these children seats behind you. Some accidents have happened even uh, without uh, moving around when the when the bike is parked and and <laughs> it it fell over and you cannot give a a, a clear picture about safety yeah. issues on that. But in general, it's safe to to transport children in a cargo bag. Do you know any consultants in Austria, Germany or worldwide who are into this issue and go to kindergarten schools to promote cargo bikes as a means of family transport? Yes, we do. Uh, uh, FGM AMA, we do. We go into kindergartens. We have obviously a long um, relationship with kindergartens here in this country from many uh, previous EU projects and uh, we have um, a good uh, connection with uh, most of the kindergartens around so um, we are doing this that we will um, lend them cargo bikes. Oh, well, we have buddy. already, I'm sorry, we have also in the past uh, lent them cargo um, trailers, so bike trailers, and that worked very well uh, also for the parents. They could then uh, take it out for a few days uh, and try it out, so that worked already very well. Yeah, and of course in Copenhagen it's the very normal way uh, to transport uh, kindergarten by cargo bike in the in the daycare center or in the, in the kindergarten. And as far as I know, also the city of Freiburg in Germany uh, had a, a program uh, dealing more with, with bike trailers, but to, to shift from car transport to bike transport for uh, uh, arriving at the kindergarten. There's one question for you, Carl. Um, you met one of our attendees at the Cargo Bike Festival in Hornigen last year and told him about the efforts to develop a web application to manage the sharing. Is there any progress concerning this system? I can uh, answer this. Uh, so this is probably Carl Mente ca Commons cargo bike um, scheme. And um, this will be released um, in the next weeks. We are working together with Commons cargo bike in uh, Germany. And they have uh, made a little video and uh, they have produced a manual um, and uh, the website. And so this will all be um, sort of um, launched within the next weeks, uh, but definitely this summer. So there is progress, it's already, uh, but we haven't had uh, a press release about that yet. One of our attendees runs a local bike association and he would like to engage a cargo, cargo bike triad action in the city. Um, would you have any recommendations, insurance, how to finance the cargo bike? Well, which, which city is he talking about? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, 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 I suppose it's a city without uh, a funding scheme. It's near Paris in France. Okay. okay. Yeah, I don't know if we can. May, maybe we can get in personal contact. Yeah. Uh, because some of our project uh, 
Uh, yeah. uh, tasks is to to establish try out uh, situations. So, if if he right, if you yeah, if you could write to us, that would help. Uh, but of course, again, this is I think something that varies greatly depending on where you are and uh, the national uh, rules. Uh, insurance uh, is a problem or is a concern or something that you definitely have to keep in mind. Uh, for instance, our colleagues in San Sebastian in Spain, uh, they have been uh, carrying out a lot of uh, tryouts, uh, cargo bike tryouts uh, in their city, so we could put you in contact uh, with them. And um, yeah, then I guess uh, another option would be uh, about the financing to get together with the cargo bike retailers in the area or in the city and um, tell them first about the advantages of cargo bike that they could, uh, you, you know, sell a lot of them after such a tryout. And then maybe they uh, will would agree to uh, lend you some cargo bikes or rent out some cargo bikes for this specific tryout day. Uh, of course, yeah. um, it depends also on the contacts to the city, but we can connect you also with the uh, French partner of City Changer Cargo Bike. In it's Strasbourg. The city of Strasbourg. But anyway, get in contact with us and we find maybe yeah. a solution to support you. And we also have a contact in Paris, so we could put you in contact there as well. Would you agree to place a classic tandem bike as a cargo bike? Uh, to me, a great way to go out with my kids uh, when the distance is too long for their little legs. <laughs> um, or if the car traffic is too heavy, um, it makes it more comfortable uh, within cities. Yeah, I, I start maybe, uh, I don't know if a tandem is a cargo bike, but in a sense, if you uh, have a very wide interpretation of what a cargo bike is, then uh, anything with a, you know, more sturdy uh, back rack, in a sense, could be a cargo bike. Um, and that depends on how you are um, characterizing it. For instance, for a lot of um, funding schemes or subsidy schemes, uh, the, the local authorities uh, uh, you know, want to have a definition of what is a cargo bike. So maybe it has to be able to take a load of 80 kilos and then it's a cargo bike, you know? Uh, so, um, yeah. It's about tandems as tandems, a cargo bike. Yeah. yeah, there exist different type, types of tandems. <laughs> there is, I think there is even one uh, bike where you have in front of you uh, some loading area, or you can change it to, uh, let's say, to a second, to a seat for a second person. In this case, it would be a combined uh, vehicle for uh, for load or for person, and and, and that uh, that type of tandem would, uh, of course, fit to this cargo bike definition. And in the other, on the other hand, as Susanne said, if you have a a big back rack or something which makes you available to transport more than the normal uh, 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 goods. You can transport bigger goods, then you can also define it that, uh, that, as that. Are there any EU safety regulations for cargo bikes? Something similar to NCAP safety ratings for cars? which tests passengers safety in the event of a crash. Mm. Yeah, safety is obviously a very big issue for cargo bikes. And at the moment, uh, there are various uh, standardization efforts uh, that also obviously have to do with safety regulations. Uh, and the cargo bike, a city changer cargo bike project uh, has a partner, the um, Cycling Industry Europe, um, which again uh, has formed an expert group on cargo bikes and uh, parts of this expert group uh, deal with exactly this um, subtopic of standardizations and safety regulations. So uh, we are working on that. There are no regulations as of it yet, uh, but uh, we, this is in progress. 
There are some regulations in place, but this is uh, connected with uh, the electric uh, support system of the bike. How is it with parking a car cargo bike on the pavement? Do the same rules as for the non-cargo bikes gener generally apply? Uh, it is meant if you, if you use the same space as normal bicycles are using. Yeah, this is <laughs> one of the most tricky, <laughs> most tricky things. Uh, some cities uh, experiment with that by using pictograms on the on the, on the pavements to to make other cyclists aware that this is the space for for cargo bikes. But this is work in progress, I would say. <laughs> yeah. We have no clear uh, uh, solution for that. Or, no, or we don't know any city who has a clear solution for that. It, it could be some uh, roofed bicycle stands which have uh, clear access, but then it's public ground and you cannot easily public ground dedicate to a certain person and, and his or her vehicle. I mean, with regards to delivery by cargo bike, of course, this is uh, the advantage of the cargo bike that they can just go up on a pavement and park there for a short while and load and unload. Uh, if this is uh, allowed or not uh, is the question, uh, but wow. uh, this is one of the advantages. So to go up on the pavement, yeah. Ah, it was about the sidewalks. Yeah, the sidewalks. Ah. <laughs> okay, yeah. so I didn't get it. I thought about the parking <laughs> no, space. No. Oh, sorry. And the pavement, of course, yeah. I mean, if you're not allowed to park a bicycle on the pavement, you shouldn't park a cargo bike, particularly no. if it blocks the uh, pavement for pedestrians. Uh, um, yeah. <laughs> Do you, I need to convince <laughs> my wife or for a child so i have a very good excuse to buy and ride a cargo bike <laughs> i think so <laughs>